Mac, math, math, math. Let's do some maths today. Statistics. Okay, so today we're looking at histograms um, and we'll do some questions from the, I'll explain what histograms are again for you uh, from GCSE. If you remember, it was always the grade A questions at GCSE. Um, but they're fairly sort of straightforward, they're just posh bar charts. Okay, so let's have a look at histograms and then we'll do some questions from exercise uh, 3D. So I've picked the first one, a middle one that says it's a problem and one that says it's an exam question near the end of that exercise and you can fill in the gaps. Okay, all right, so let's just put that to one side. So with my questions on, um, just drawn a, just made up some um, data here, some the mass of, like we can go apples again and the frequency of them and so on. So... We're going to draw um, our posh bar chart of this. And this explains what frequency, sorry, what histograms are. First of all, 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, the class widths here are all the same. But with um, histograms, that's often not the case. They don't have to be the same. Um, the, the scale is always, you know, it's always the same sort of scale, but the, the, the class widths can be different widths, okay? And um, we've got the frequency, we've got 25 apples this time between 0 and 10 gra you know, kilograms. Wow, they're heavy, heavy apples and they're absolutely massive. These are world record uh, uh, apples. But the main difference is that this scale here, which you're often not given on the exam or when you're asked to draw, it is the frequency density, not the frequency. So you can see it's different than here. And that's because a histogram, it's not the height of the bar, it's the area uh, of the bar. OK, um, that represents the frequency. So, for instance, if we look at this, we'll just do this one here. We'll just do one bar and it's this one here. So 20 to 30, that has a class width of 10. OK, and it has a frequency of 40. So that means the area of this bar has to be 40. OK, it has to be 40 centimetres squared or 40 units squared. And if this is 10, then of course, 10 times four makes 40, okay? So it has to have a height of four. And if you're, you've got a scale and it's dashed around, there you go, you can see you've got four. I mean, you can have every half or whatever, but I'm just gonna go up to here, okay, and across there. And now if I call that four, I've got uh, a bar that has a class width of 10, a height of four, the frequency, we call that the frequency density, so it gives it an area of 40 units squared. And that would be how we do our histogram. So that means that that would be three, two, and one, wouldn't it? To keep the, 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 the um, scale consistent. If you want to work that out, okay, then re remember then that the frequency density, this scale here, has to be the frequency divided by the class width. Okay, that's always the case. So 40 divided by 10 is four. 20 divided by 10 is two. And 25 divided by 10 is 2.5. So now if you wanted to draw this bar in here, this first one, um, with a frequency of 25, you'd have to go up to 2.5. Okay, and this one, you'd have to go up to um, two. There you go, and that would be uh, for, um, a histogram for this particular data. Okay, so I always used to remember this little formula here of well, I mean, you can remember it by just knowing that the, the bar has to be the area. Um, but f when you say frequency density, when I used to say to myself frequency density, um you say that word, you say, say frequency first, so it equals the frequency first, you write the frequency first divided by the class width. That's how I always used to remember it. Okay, let's do some questions anyway. With that, solve some problems. So in the book, um, question one, so I've done three questions, start, middle, and near the end, okay, and that, they're saying this one's an exam question. Okay, so these are the ones that I'll go through with you. Um, question, let's get my masking tape. I did have masking tape, there it is. Question one, 
So there's the mass of 50 adult puffer fish. Um, put the information in, it's put the information into a table for you. It has kept the groups, you know, are all five, are all five, a width of five. So it has kept them similar. That's unusual again for a histogram. It's just asking you to draw a histogram for this data. Okay. Um, so I've already um, 10 to 35. So I've put, you know, a scale of the mass in pounds along the bottom here. And I've just put dashes up the side here. We'll work out what that is in a moment. Now, remember this first bar, 10 to 15. So here to here has to have an area um, of four. OK, so we have to decide on a scale here. So that is five and it has to have an area of four. So we do if you do the frequency divided by the class width. OK, so five, uh, four divided by five is 0 0.8. So it has to have a height of 0 0.8, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make that one. Now normally I do, I pick one of the bigger ones just to check that it fits on, and I, I did it before it does. So 23, this um, has 23, and the class width is five. So 23 divided by five is, I'll just do that on the calculator, because I haven't got a brain, is 4.6, so that has, 4.6. This is the frequency density. Okay, so 4.6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now it's going to fit on, isn't it? Okay, so now I'm going to draw, I'll work out all my frequency densities first. Okay, 12 divided by 5, 12 divided by 5 is 2.4. Um, 8 divided by 5 is 1.6 and 3 divided by 5 is 0 0.6. Okay, so I've got all my frequency densities worked out now and just need to do them in. So the first one goes to between 10 and 15 goes to 0 0.8. Now you'd be doing this with a pencil and a ruler. 0 0.8, next one 2.4. 2.4 is there. I'm being very careful. If I saw a student in my class doing this, remember at GCSE, if you ever have me at GCSE, I'd be going, going absolutely mad. I'd be going absolutely mental at this point. Going down here, 1.6 and 0.6. And there it is. Well, they don't normally look like that because they normally have different uh, class widths and you'll see that in a second but there it's done it does say on this one on the same axis draw a frequency polygon i don't quite agree with this a frequency polygon if you remember what you do from gcse you just put a little cross in the middle of your your bar chart and then just join them up with a pencil and a ruler with a straight line and you get a little mountain range like that you don't join it up from, from the end you just do that but I suppose this is not really a frequency polygon it's a frequency density density polygon you know it's just instead of the bars okay but that's what it asks you to draw and that's what it means it says on the same axis so it means doing it like on the frequency density axis so but again this does not mean the frequency the height of these okay it is the area of the bars okay so there we go that's the first one done now then number Four. Now I've copied it from the textbook. Um, in the textbook, this is what you see. Um, theirs in the textbook is nice and colourful. They've actually coloured all of the bars in. This it looks more typical now. This is a sample of lambs. So a farmer has weighed some lambs. Okay, and he's drawn a. Uh, this farmer is also into um, A level maths. Um, so he's drawn himself a histogram in the farmhouse late at night. Okay. Um, and um, he's drawn himself a histogram and you can see it's more typical of a histogram this one that it's got different widths but it's the areas of these bars these rectangles that is the frequency of the lambs okay so it gives you some information about it so let's do this question then so the class 28 to 32 so 28 to 32 that's this bar here Okay, 
Um, it contains 32 lambs. Okay. Show that, so part A, so it tells you that has, that is for 32 lambs. The area of that is 32. Okay. Um, so it, it, it says, um, show that 25 small squares is 10 lambs. Okay. Well, if I just move that along here, this is, t I don't know if you can see that, I hope you can, it's 10 little squares and 10 little squares up on the grid from the book. So that's 100 little squares is equal to 32 lambs, that area of 100 squares, and this is the number of lambs. That's the information that you're given. So 28 to 32 is 10 little squares above, Okay, and the bar is drawn 10 little squares up, so that's 100 little squares. You divide that by 4, you get 25. You divide that by 4, and you get 8, and there's our proof. Okay, more than that, okay, I'm going to do a little bit more now, um, because, because it's told us that this is 32. 28 to 32 is 4, that's a class width of 4, and what makes 32? 8, so it must have a height of 8. So 4 times 8. So now I know that that is 8. The frequency density of that is 8. If that is 8, the scale has got to be correct here. So that has got to be 4. That's got to be 0, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 30, 34, 38, and so on. Going up in 4s. Have I even done that right? I, I don't think I have actually. 24, 28, 32, poo. 32, 36. I'm hopeless at maths. And 40. Okay, so we've, I've actually now been able to get the frequency density for, uh, for this. Um, B says find the frequency of class 24 to 26. So 24 to 26 now, we want the area of that, don't we? Because we've got this on now, we've got it's got a height of 16. So this is part B. Part B. Find the frequency of class 24 to 26. So it's 2 times 16, because it's got a width of 2. It's got a height of 16. It's 32. So the frequency of that, there's also that also has an area of 32. It's a different shape. Then this one, this square, and this rectangle have the same area. So they contain the same number of lambs. Okay. It says, how many lambs did the farmer weigh? Okay. Well, that's 32. That's 32 because it's the same size. This one is 2, and it's 32 high. So 2 times 32 is 64. That area is 64. And this is... 2 wide and 4 up, two, four, 2 times 4 is 8, okay? So I've worked out the areas of all of the bars, and the areas of all of the bars, of course, okay, is the total amount of sheep that he has. So 64, another 64 is 128, 130, 160, 168. He, he weighed 168 lambs. Um, and then the last one, you, you often get asked these, um, where was it, there was a, yeah, estimate how many lambs are between 25 and 29 kilograms, okay? So 25 to 29 kilograms. So 25 is there. And 29 is there. So it's this, as an estimate, this many lamps that I've shaded in. Um, now, and you can just count the little squares and do it from what we worked out at the, at the bottom. But I would use the, the areas of those um, three bars that we've got. So this between 25 and 26 is 1 and a height of 16. So that is 16. Plus this bar has 64 in. That's all of them. And then this is 1, isn't it? From 28 to 29 is 1, and it has a height of 8. So 
1 times 8 is 8. So between 25 and 29, there are 16, 64 and 8 lands. Um, whatever that is, 24, 24, add 64 is 88. So D is 88 lambs between 25 kilograms and 29 kilograms. There we go. So we just draw lines down and work out the areas. And if you've got the frequency density in, uh, it makes it easy because you're just then doing, you know, length times width for rectangles. It's just areas. Okay. There we go. That was that one. And then it finished. I'm going to, or I'm going to finish with um, question six. It doesn't really tell you much about what it's actually drawing a histogram for. It's not asking you to draw a histogram. It's not drawn one for you. It's just giving you some information. It sounds very scientific, this one. So it says a variable y. So it gives you this table. Sorry, I didn't. I normally do my little freehand lazy um, green pen do this. Um, it says a variable y measured to the nearest whole number. So these have been rounded off. These for sixty observations. So a frequency of sixty. If you add these up, twenty four. Uh, 6, 18 and 12, you get 60. Um, so this is a table that you could draw a histogram of. It's not drawing a histogram of it. It says, it's just it's, you, we're just answering questions. It says, write down the boundaries for the 13 to 14 class. Okay, so that's part A. So the 13 to 14 class, because it's been rounded off to the nearest whole number. Of course, the boundary is 12.5 to 14.5, isn't it? I know that that would round up, but it can be infinitely close to that. So that is the class boundary. Remember that from when we did interpolation. So it, can, it is actually a class width uh, um, is equal to two, isn't it? That's got a class width of two. Okay. It says a histogram was drawn and the 13 to 14 um, had a width of four centimetres. So they drew that four centimetres when they did their sort of histogram. OK, so the 13 to 14. So it would have been something like that. 12, 13, 14, 15 along the bottom. That's what the scale would have looked like. And this bar, 13 to 14, would have been a bar you know, that sort of, you know, came up like that from 12.5 to 14.5. And the next one would have been a bar that went onwards. OK, and this has a class width of two centimetres, 12.5 to 14.5. So this must have been every centimetre on there. Uh, and then it says. Um, and a height of six, so six here. OK, it has a height of six. Um, has a width of four and a height of six centimetres. OK, so, yep, yeah, all right. So it has a height of uh, a width of four centimetres and a height of six centimetres. OK. For the bar representing 15 to 70 class, find the width and the height. OK, so 15 to 17, OK, if... Um, a class width of two has four centimetres. Um, the 15 to 17 class goes from 14.5 to 17.5. The class width there is three centimetres. And you can see it's double. That's the, um, the scale factor, isn't it? OK, so a class width of two has four centimetres. So a class width of three is going to have six centimeters okay yeah that's right um i've got a minute now yeah that's right okay uh so that makes sense um so um what do we need to do we need to find the height of that 
15 to 17 class. So we need to find the height of this bar. Well, if you go to the 15 to 17, you can see that its frequency is 18, okay? Um, so this bar here, in fact, let's draw it in. So we've got 17 here and we're going up to 17.5. There we go. Uh, so that's 17.5. So this here, we've just worked out is six centimeters. And it has a frequency in that, it tells us in our grid here, of 18, okay? Um, so in that case, if it's got a frequency of 18, um, we need six times three centimeters high, don't we? It needs to have a height of three centimeters to give it um, an area of 18. So it has a width of six, and it has a height of three centimetres. Okay. Um, as you can see on here, I've not I've drawn it to a terrible scale. If that has a height of three centimetres, and this one has a height of six centimetres, whoops, you know, that's going to be sort of all there, isn't it? Okay. Is that right? And the history, I'm just checking out on this right, it's got two centimetres and it has a width of four centimetres and a height of six. Six fours are 24, yep, yeah. okay, that makes sense. 24 and six threes are 18. So that's sixes up there, isn't it? These threes down here. Okay, there we go, we got there in the end. Okay, so that was just really just thinking about rectangles, wasn't it? All right, and I hope that made sense. Okay, so class width here was three. So the frequency density, that frequency divided, remember we do frequency density is the frequency divided by the class width. Okay, and the frequency density is the height of the bar. Okay. Over and out.